very few people know the glory of, of the rock art sites that are in the Kimberley and the sheer scale of these rock art sites. They're magnificent, but there are so many of them. If Australians didn't go deep into their own history and the culture and the vegetation and the animals and deeply understand their own country, then they would never have anything other than a shallowly rooted, transplanted European culture. So the dates are one thing, but knowing our own story is what this is about. My boy's name is Borun, that's the Western Taipan, and my other boy's name is called Pongolmo. That's the name of the area around here. I'm the low man yet. Carson River and the leader of my family. After four or five years of hard, hard research, hard labour, which is uh, now producing a, a good outline of a structured program of uh, archaeology, archaeological excavations showing how people were living, what they were doing in the Kimberley. We're seeing the dating starting to come to fruition with the chronology now going back to at least the last glacial maximum. We're getting other viewpoints on what that world was like with coastlines very, very different to what they are today. We're starting to see also a very exciting connections between what was going on in the Kimberley and what was going on in other great provinces in Australia. All of this work is happening through the agency of the the Kimberley Foundation Australia and their supporters, their donors, all of the people who with such tremendous enthusiasm support this work. We are seeing now a wonderful collation of research results and exciting new perspectives, all of which are telling this rich, deep history of this continent. The last six years of working in the Kimberley uh, Rock Art Chair role has been an incredible journey as one of the great cultural conservation estates, biodiversity hotspots in the world. The Kimberley deserves very serious treatment as a shared chattel uh, as part of the custodianship of Aboriginal communities in Australia but also the wider public. In working on a range of scientific conservation and management projects funded by the Australian Research Council, with support from Kimberley Foundation, very strong buy-in and support by different Aboriginal corporations and research contracts with the Kimberley Land Council. We've addressed some of the big issues. So younger people in the South who care about the values of the North, uh, wider communities both in Australia and internationally who care about not just the protection of art, but the actual deep understanding of Australia's big story, the Aboriginal story. These are not just paintings on walls. Art is off the rocks. Um, symbolic behaviour is what makes us human, and this is part of a record that's almost unrivaled globally. Rock art traditions, which have communities of interest who curate the art, who have active mythology, who are owners of the art, are not that common in the world. Maybe southern Texas on the Rio Grande, uh, parts of South America, but here in Australia we have communities that are direct descendants of those people who made the original markings and paintings and they are communities of interest uh, and owners um, identified both in native title and common law but of course customary law. So yes, the Kimberley and, and Arnhem Land are areas of extraordinary contemporary uh, cultural and heritage significance and that, that is unquestionably part of the DNA of the heritage, high heritage values, extraordinary heritage values of modern Australia. My name is Helen Green and I am a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Melbourne in the School of Earth Sciences. I am the recipient of the Kimberley Foundation Fellowship in Rock Art Dating, which I started just last year and runs for the next five years. Uh, and I've been working on the Rock Art Dating project for the last 
four years. My role in the project is to apply uranium thorium dating to mineral accretions that are forming on the walls and ceilings of Kimberley rock art shelters and to use these to provide bracketing ages for the art that we find in this region. This is a new application of this technique. The technique has been applied in Europe and Indonesia to date rock art in those regions. We are applying this technique to new materials that have never been dated using this method before. What's really exciting about this project is it is helping to look into the deep history of Australia and of Australia's first people and it's really great to be involved in that work. And we're going to investigate the paleoenvironmental history of the Kimberley for the last, hopefully, 60,000 years. The purpose of that is to understand how the paleoclimate relates to the world-renowned rock art in the Kimberley and also to the first Australians who produced that art. One of the outputs from this exciting new project will be the development of what we hope will be a, an e-atlas and that will take the form of a web interface where users, any users, school children, teachers, university researchers, or those just with an interest in, in Australia's cultural history and environmental history, can log online, select a site in the Kimberley, click on it, enter a date in the past, maybe 35,000 years ago, and that'll give people the opportunity to actually appreciate the kind of environment and the weather and climate that Australia's earliest inhabitants experienced at that time in the past thousand years. The foundation is supported by hundreds of people, people who want to know the story that lies behind the Kimberley's ancient rock art, people who care about conserving the rock art, who want to help us uncover Australia's earliest untold history, people who want to see it protected and recognised for its worldwide significance. Wouldn't you?